How you doing FCF? We are starting a brand new series in our daily teaching moments. And we're starting with a theme that's in scripture that can be a little bit confusing sometimes. It's a theme about what scripture calls the world. Now the world is used in various ways in scripture. Sometimes it just means, you know, the earth. Sometimes it means the people that are on the earth, you know, the world of people, the world of the physical earth. But then there's a third usage, and that's the one we're going to focus on. It's the word for for a system, an organized system that involves, you know, people, places, values, fads, trends, uh, virtually everything, philosophies, ideologies, and it's the word cosmos. And Jesus starts talking to us in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, about this system that he calls the world. And that's what it is. It's a system. So let me just read. This is Jesus last night with his disciples. And in John chapter 14, verse 30, and mind you, he's just hours before going to the cross. He knows that. He's told his disciples. He says in John 14, 30, I will not speak with you much longer, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me. The prince of this world is coming. Who is Jesus talking about? And as we go on in this series, it'll become very clear to you who the prince of the world is. But let me go on and read in the very next chapter. Mind you, this is a conversation that all happened that very same night. Jesus says this in John 15, verse 18, speaking to his followers. He says, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world... It would love love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. This is why the world hates you. So obviously he's talking about a system that involves people. Let me take you to one more portion. This is the same night, John 17. And in verse 11, he picks up this theme again. He says, Verse 11, 17, 11, I will remain in the world no longer, but they, he's praying now, his high priestly prayer, his last prayer with the Father, he says, I will remain in the world no longer, but they, meaning his disciples, are still in the world. I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the, doom, the one doomed to destruction that the scripture might be fulfilled. He says, now listen to this, verse 18. Now I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. Verse 15. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For, for them, I sanctify myself that they may be truly sanctified. So here, here we have all these passages that are dealing with this subject called the world. Jesus tells his disciples the world hated him. It says they're going to hate them too. He says that he came into the world and now he is sending his disciples likewise into the world. Well, Jesus came into the world to reveal the full truth about God, what God was really like, who he really is, what he really felt like, uh, how trustworthy he was, what his plans and his purposes and his eternal intentions were for humanity. And now we, his followers, are sent likewise into the world. But Jesus tells us that just as the world rejected him, hated him, ultimately crucified him, we too will be disliked by the world, if not hated. So the world in Scripture, you're going to see as we go on in this further, it's, as I said, it's a system. It's, it's, it involves philosophies of life. It involves value systems. It involves uh, ideologies of various sorts. It involves all kinds of religions of various sorts. But they're all, they all have one thing in common. They are a distortion of the truth. 
They distort the truth about God. They distort and deceive of the truth about life. Jesus prepares us. He says that this world system will not be one that accepts us greatly. Other places we'll find the scripture tells us right out, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So when you think about the world system, we, we need to ask ourselves some questions like this. You and I, we all have a value system. We all have, in other words, things that we consider important and unimportant. What has formed our value system? Are the things that we consider important the things that God considers important? They're based on his word. Are the, or are the things we consider important things that society has just sort of pressed upon us as things that are considered highly prized by society? Are you, am I, prepared for the hostility of the world? Jesus was trying to prepare his followers for the fact that we're not going to be popular for the most part. Think about it, the world we live in today. When you turn on your TV, when you pick up anything to read, when you think about secular institutions of learning, these are not places. You don't find TV shows one after another talking about the Bible, talking about the truth about God and Christ. You don't read magazines and newspapers that are centering their worldview from the perspective of God and His truth and Christ. You don't find their, their educational systems are centering everything they teach in, in God's truth and God's Word. They are hostile, they act, they live, they teach. They fabricate an existence as though God isn't really here, or if he's here, he doesn't matter, uh, as though he, his existence is inconsequential. That's just the tip of the ice of this thing that's called the world system. And as his followers, we are expected, or we are told to expect hostility from that system. If the world hates you, Jesus said, be of good cheer, it hated me first. It's because we are mirroring the image of Christ, which is mirroring the image of God to a world that's been deceived about the truth about God. Now the good news is this, even though the world is often hostile, it can be at times won over, one individual at a time. You yourself were won over, I myself was won over. There was a time when I was very hostile, I was part of the world, but the truth about God broke in captured my heart, won my trust, and that's why we have to go forward into the world knowing its hostility, but not being afraid of it. I hope this gets you started. We're going to be carrying this on now for um, seven more sessions. This theme that is so prominent in Scripture, God wants us to be aware about this world. It is a system that is hostile to God and hostile to those that are true to God. I hope this will prepare you. I'm holding to the love that has laid